Love that. Love that. So, guys, welcome to Fully Loaded. You have officially been <laughs> welcome to Fully Loaded. That's what Fully Loaded means to us. And That was a joke, right? Huh? No, no. I'm transitioning here. No, fully quick. funded. Fully loaded. I keep on saying. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're going to cut. <laughs> Aaron's going to do some editing. Uh, and we're going to go back. Yo, yeah, like, yeah, seriously, yeah, that was yeah, hilarious. Yeah, that's no, that's leave that going. in there. You're turning, going, yo, you're turning red right yeah, now. Because I'm, I'm getting hot. I don't like to mess up. <laughs> you know what we need fully to do? Funded. We're going to add a loaded yeah. bar yeah. underneath fully funded. Because <laughs> oh, by the end, we're fully loaded. All right, guys. Right? So how many times is Ryan going to say fully, fully loaded. loaded? But where's fully loaded coming from? Because of his analogy, he's yeah. like trying to load. Yeah, so I get it. So the whole time it, when he's talking. Producer, to, get him on here. <laughs> so the whole time he's telling his story, I'm thinking about loading the bar. Uh-huh. And loading. Bro, you have fully, fully funded, funded right fully, there on the screen. And you're funded. like, all right, everybody. We're, like, we got to record a promo. All right, guys. So welcome to Fully Funded. Hey, sorry. We got we to gotta have a little fun. Like, no, no. That's, that's what the podcast is, right? Like having candid conversation. It's so, okay to mess up in life. Yeah, I agree. You so are we supposed to are, are we supposed to like introduce ourselves? Like but That's what I wanted to go to. We haven't even like said our names well, like that's what i was trying to get to next <laughs> like well and if you have something nice there are going to be people that are going to be like you know it doesn't matter what you do like people are going to point at you and say you're showing off and like i said there's always a line Right. If you have somebody who's just an average, maybe blue collar, white collar worker, and they get their BMW for the first time, most people are happy for them. When they get their second or third one, peop, there's people look and like, okay, where's the next underdog? Because that's all I care about is the underdog. Once they succeed, I, I don't care about them anymore. Well, it's that saying, you know, it's like people want you to do good, just not better than them, mm-hmm. right? So once they start to see that, it's like, oh, hold on, you know. But I think that's not most people, and I think that because of like social media. It's the ones that are louder are the ones that we give more attention to. For sure. And whereas there's a lot more other people that are looking and like, okay, good for him. Because like the whole point of us being together is to talk about, like we mentioned fully funded, talking about like what that actually means. And like his Lamborghini is a perfect example of that. Like he wanted, maybe, I don't know if he really wanted the car, if like that was your dream car or not, but you made a business decision to, mm-hmm. to fund that vehicle. So yeah. now you get to drive it. Somebody else yeah. is paying for it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, how did you get to that even philosophy? Because I think that that's a cool thing, too. Like, a lot of people look at it like, all right, I get this nice car. It's just a car. I'm just getting this car. But yeah. you look at things a little differently. Like, all right, I'm going to find the way to get this car, but I'm also going to find the way for it to make yeah. money for me. Yeah, so, like, if we go back maybe, like, 10 years, maybe more, I can't pin the exact timeline now, but when I purchased my first rental property, <clears throat> this is... Whatever it was, let's just call it 10 years ago when I purchased one of my rental properties, not my first home, but like an actual investment property. You know, I it was kind of like the rich dad, poor dad concept, right? Robert Kiyosaki books of like listening and being like, okay, like if you're, you can enjoy luxuries in life, but you better have assets paying for them. So when I got my, one of my first rental properties was a condo that I bought out in East Orlando. We're in Orlando right now recording this podcast. And in East Orlando, um, there was this condo community. I picked up my first investment property for like $48,000 a condo. Wow. Right? Like it was crazy. And at that time I was actually able to purchase that home cash because I had saved some money. In fact, we'll, we'll, we'll everybody will kind of know our stories, but you know, basically I, I decided I want to save a hundred thousand dollars before I made any investment. That was like my delayed gratification. So when I had that hundred thousand dollars, Um, I was like, okay, what am I going to do with it? And I had an opportunity to buy this condo and that was the first time ever. I think like the first time I got that condo was like a thousand bucks a month. Like was my first, like how much I was renting out or 1200, whatever it was. But after I paid like my tax insurance, HOA, cause then I have a mortgage on it. I think I was left with like five or 600 bucks. And at that time I was like, okay, like I like, I like luxury items. Right. And I, I like cars and you know, for those of, you know, that know my story, like I was bankrupt at 21 years old because I was, uh, what, what's the word? Like I was, um, irresponsible <laughs> with, with purchasing luxury items. So I'm like, if I'm going to do this a second go around, because the desire to like have these luxuries, and this is a conversation we could have about material items and all this stuff. But like, I thoroughly enjoyed v- cars. Like that was my one thing. Like I enjoyed cars. So when I had that opportunity, I was like, how do I 
be responsible with what most people think is an irresponsible purchase as a luxury now is item. Th- now, is this thought after bankruptcy or before? Yeah, no, this is after bankruptcy. When I filed bankruptcy, it was all about how much. Before that, I was like, okay, I make five grand a month. I could spend five grand. There was nothing. So now it was like, how do I still fulfill the desires that I had before, but now do it in a smarter way? So basically, this is like a long story short is that at that very moment, because I was cash flowing six, 700 bucks from that investment property, I was able to go out and take that and buy my first car. And now this goes back, <clears throat> excuse me, actually to me trying to rationalize my behavior to people instead of being like, oh, I like nice things, I work hard. My first car, I bought a nice luxury vehicle. If somebody asked me about it and was like, oh, Zach, like, why do you have that nice car? I was like, oh, I have an investment property that's paying for it. And it was my way to be like, oh, like I'm not like, I don't know. It was like, you get what I'm saying? Like it was my insecurity at that time doing it. But now it go. it actually, those insecurities, believe it or not, are still kind of there. But now like I've hacked and I figured out. So way back then I was like, I could figure it out. So now as my car habit, we'll call it a habit as progressed. <laughs> Christian loves to, to talk about the yeah. habit. Yes. Uh, <laughs> a Eurus was something I always wanted. Loved that car, but I couldn't rationalize spending the kind of money because I had the Audi. Mm-hmm. And let's be real, it's like the same exact vehicle, like um, but, but nicer. Mm-hmm. And I was like, Arguably I'm going to buy this car. And in fact, I knew somebody who was in the Turo game at, that goes to the gym with me. And I, I literally walked up to him. I was like, let's buy a Lamborghini Urus this week. He's like, let's do it. And I was like, what? Two days later, he actually, he was like, there's one that would probably work out over at this dealership. I was like, I'm going to check it out. And I had actually done business with that dealership. Two days later, I owned that car. I just manifested in existence. And now that car, I've had it for three months, is, is paid for itself and then some. So I was able to you know, do that. And that's kind of what fully funded is. And we're going to elaborate a little bit more on what fully funded means. But how what did we get here? What does it mean to you? Well, I think it's, it's a part of our lives. Yeah. So just naturally talking about something that interests you. But you already kind of started talking about like what fully funded means to you. And I think that's a portion of it is... How do I enjoy nice things in life without using my day job to justify it? Yeah, and I think that's cool because all of us have these like hacks that we have figured mm-hmm. out, right? I'm like, hey man, I want to go on vacation. Do you got any points? <laughs> right? Because like we're strategic, and honestly, like I'm so excited to hear about some of those things because for me, like I have I don't have any patience. I have like massive ADD when it comes to that. Like I've got an Amex credit card and like a bank credit card, right? And and then I tell Christian like I use my debit card. Like he'll cringe. He's like, why are you using your debit card on that? But yeah, I mean like. Fully funded for us means so many things and different things to the, each of us. But, you know, I'm, I'm thankful because we started this uh, this vlog at our, 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 we'll call it our nine to five job. You know, we're all in the mortgage business and stuff. And we originally started this vlog to kind of show the behind the scenes of our day to day in our mortgage business. And that's evolved to us believing that we'll have a greater impact doing this podcast where now fully funded has become not just a brand or a vlog on YouTube, but actual like way of living sort of like new rich right you know and 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 you've got that brand and that going on and i think you've really embodied that in your life and maybe you could touch base on that later but yeah i mean fully funded is just you know like in all aspects of life having true fulfillment and um it's definitely something that's like evolved over time because like originally it was like okay fully funded it's a term we use when a loan closes funds everything's good yeah everybody's happy and you know we even take it a step further on the back end because most people don't realize that when a loan closes or a a purchase closes there's a lot more that happens behind the scenes before it's like fully packaged and sold off so like that fully funded is that's where like derived from and we Mm -hmm. use it for our vlog and then just kind of sitting there and looking at that and thinking if you look at the last one of the, I think the last episode, because we, we did two seasons. So it was the last episode of the first season, I believe, mm-hmm. where like we're in Miami. And it's like this great experience that we all got to enjoy as a result of our mortgage business. Yeah. Now it's like you get to enjoy driving a Lamborghini as a result of your Toro business. Or some people get to enjoy a vacation as a result of their short term Airbnb business. And there's so many ways to. Really enjoy your life in the way you want to enjoy it, not just what somebody else is saying. Because like I'm not doing what Zach's doing. I don't. I might not have the. I'm not as risk averse to go there and, and sign a, a monthly payment for a Lamborghini in hopes that it'll get rented out. But at the same time, like I might be more risk adverse to get a rental property in another state, hoping that it's going to rent out and buying like at what's top of the market, right? But now it's like something that has equated to equity. And so there's so many different ways that you can fund your life and w- in the way you want to fund it, right? Yeah. What's important to you? Me traveling is important. So a lot of things I do, like just 
operating my life is to think like that next trip. But of course, it's always to think like, how do I enjoy the best trip for as little money as possible, leveraging something else? That's why I, like, I hate when people use debit cards. Like every time you swipe a debit card, you're giving your bank money and yeah. you're getting nothing in return. And you're opening yourself up for risk. Because if somebody steals that debit card and takes money out of your bank account, it's a lot harder to get your cash back as opposed to a credit card where it just they just hold the transactions until they resolve it. Well, I yeah. think it's programming too because like credit cards in general just have like a bad stigma. Like, oh, you're using credit. That means you're putting yourself into debt. But you figured out how to like leverage it for like points. and. Yeah. I found so that. many people it's over a the good year, debt. Yeah. So many people over the years think like, oh, if I put something on a credit card, I could pay interest. I'm like, no, that's not the case. Like yeah. you charge it, your, your statement ends, you pay that statement off, you pay zero interest on it. And then with that, depending on the card you have, you get rewards and how to do it. So these companies are just straight up making a bet that... 99.99% of people are not going to be business savvy to, to hack the system. And, and they're baiting you like these cigarette, old cigarette commercials yeah. and stuff. They're baiting you to use these cards for these awards to get in debt. But the very few that are able to figure it out, they're able to leverage those things for their life. Well, and it's also loyalty too. Yeah. So like I'm a high guy and I have a high credit card and yeah, you know, we use it for certain business charges to, mm-hmm. and we've all enjoyed the fruits of that. Well, I'm a high guy now, which mm-hmm. means that if, I don't have points. Well, I mean, I always have points, but sometimes I don't want to use the points or I got to spend the money. I'm still going to look at a high. So they're going to get my business. And then when you go to those hotels, you're going to spend other money while you're there. And yeah. so they're also, they know like, okay, yeah, we, we might earn some interest, but the bank really keeps that. The bank's just giving them a kickback from their 3%, 4% in credit card fees that the vendor has to pay for. Cause really that's where it's coming from. Oh, yeah. You go buy something, that person you're buying something from is the one that's paying your rewards. It's not like the bank's just giving you money for free. It's coming from that transaction. But when you go to these hotels and then you build up those loyalties, you're more likely to stay there. Not everybody can rack up, you know, 30, 40,000 points a month, but they rack up just enough to get that free hotel to go spend the money. So that loyalty is so is a lot more it's more crucial there. Like I only fly Delta now because I've gotten so accustomed to like how everything operates there. And yeah. Is it a result of my Delta Amex card? Probably. Oh yeah. But Mm -hmm. the fact that like, Oh yeah. I went to New York (laughs) with with my wife and I bought economy tickets with the free, you know, the free pass they give you. So I spent 220 bucks for two tickets and each way we got upgraded to first class. Yeah. So it's like, I'm going to go back to Delta now and okay, maybe when I have to buy the regular ticket, but I've gotten so many free upgrades as a result of it. So they build that loyalty, and that's what keeps you coming back and keeps you spending. All I'm doing is listening to this and realizing how high maintenance you and I are and how low maintenance (laughs) Ryan is. (laughs) Because I'm like going to be like, hey, Ryan, what does fully funded mean to you? And I'm like, and I'm like, man, like, I'm so bougie. Like, I just sound bougie listening to us. Yeah, but the thing is, like, okay, yeah, you're you're bougie, but you're not just going into debt, right? You're not just like, oh, I just got a raise. Now I make six figures. So I'm going to, I mean, how many people do we, look at their profiles that make six figure income that have no money saved whatsoever. Crazy. So we're not looking at doing that. Yeah. That helps pay our bills and we stay within our means, but there's so much in this world that you can leverage outside of just your normal day to day that it, you're losing money by not doing it. Like Mm -hmm. there's no, if you're good managing your money and you use a debit card, well then, you know, okay, I got $500 to spend. That's all I'm going to charge on my credit card. You can set yourself limits. You can tell them to lower my, well, you don't want to do that because it affects your credit score, but if you can manage that properly, I mean, I've done so many things that is, I, I mean, my, I'll, I'll just say what it is. Like I just came back from my, we had a 10 year anniversary trip. We went to Singapore and Bali. Congratulations. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. It was a hard 10 years for uh, her. Uh, <laughs> I'm doing year one. I'm like, wow, year one to year 10. Yeah. Wait till you're married though. It changes. Lord. Uh, no, Next but, conversation. You know, it's funny, right? Cause I read, uh, you don't I, hear my I, story. No, I do. Actually, I, yeah, that's right. <laughs> keep going. No, I don't want. I want to hear what you. No, have to no, say. no, no, no. It, it's a good. We, we're staying on your story. Okay. This is like a sub pocket right, of the story. It. No, because I'm listening to both of yours. Like ten years plus, your year one, and like there was this thing. I, I've probably brought it up in some of these sales huddles before. Like where I saw this guy. You, who's that guy who does those high ticket sales like that? Um, the the guy that's always pushing on Instagram, like the high ticket sales guru guy, the no, guru. Ty Lopez. No, no, no. Um, Grant Cardone. No. Uh, insert he's a, he, other Instagram guy yeah, here. Yeah. Continue. Anyways, story. the point is, he's like, he's like, uh, in business, like zero to one million dollars is grinding grit. 
He's like one to ten million dollars is systems and processes, and then ten million plus is strategic leadership and uh, decision making. So I'm like thinking, like, okay, year one was it just a grind to get to year one? Year two, so now you're past the you developed the systems and processes in your marriage. Now it's just strategic leadership and decision making. Uh, I want to keep fully funded to make focus. Uh, we can leave the marriage gurus and the counseling channels for that stuff. And uh, uh, no, I mean that's a that's a whole different. No, conversation. man, ten years. That's uh, that's yeah. good to be accomplished. So you had to take her on a trip to Singapore. Yeah, um, which is I've never even been out of Orlando. <laughs> that's a lie. Uh, <laughs> so we we booked our trip because we also like I I love. I love free things. Mm-hmm. I do. And I love free upgrades or like leveraging it. So, and I'm all about experiences. Like what, like how do I take this trip and really experience the most out of it? So, um, I had a lot of Amex points. I saved, you know, I, I rarely spend my Amex points. Like, do you know, somebody sent me a picture the other day, like showing off their Amex points that they had like millions of Amex points. Mm-hmm. There were, there were almost 8 million Amex points. And I, and I start like, I don't know this person really well. So I was like, does this mean this person spent over eight million dollars on their Amex? I mean, it could be. I mean, usually it's one to one. There's some like promotions and stuff. Certain Amex gives you more for for meals. Uh, the the thing about Amex points is that they have no value within Amex. You got to transfer it out. So I booked a round trip flight from London to Singapore, and I booked I paid I booked business class, but then I used the points to upgrade to first. And so Smart. like it was like. It was weird. Like the go in there was like the seat was probably as wide as this little couch here, and like it was. I mean, they gave me caviar was my starting dish. I remember it. asking you, I'm like, hold on, does she get to sit next to you? Yeah, there's like, like enough room. To, there no, to sit I could, next I could to fit. You. I could fit this whole pillow next to me <laughs> on that seat, and then but coming back was like they have certain routes that they run their their. Air, it's like an Airbus 380. It's a big plane, and they have suites. And so coming yeah. back, we had like our own little rooms and it was the craziest experience that I would never spend the actual money for because it's, it's astronomically expensive, but I leverage the points. And when you look at the value for it, and these are things that like, I didn't buy the points. I just used my credit card and I saved my points. And sometimes I feel like my points is a better savings account than my actual savings account because of what you can get for it. And oh, there's yeah. so many, there's so many instances where we've been able to do that, not that, Right, yeah. the sweet thing, but it's an experience that I probably never will replicate again because, mm-hmm. again, it's just not. It's a lot of money, but I didn't spend the money, and I think that that's that's the key of this story is like being able to do those things is what's important to me, and that's how I I, I guess I fully fund my Leverage. life is by yeah. leveraging just the normal day to day stuff, the things that we do. We're already doing them. Yeah, it's just that we haven't cracked the code or we haven't figured out a way to to get the most return out of it. Cause that's what it is. It's just a return on your investment. Love that. That's you know, cool. as I'm, I'm hearing you talk about like the different ways that we're fully funding our life. What I think is super interesting as I'm like picturing and actually what had me have this memory of Christian talking about the plane was like, in your like we're spending money to like leverage different things like i'm buying a car and i'm hacking the system he's spending money on points and he's hacking the system but like man like you've flown on private you've done all these crazy things in your life and like just from straight relationships like tell me all about that it's leverage right i think everything you know tony robbins calls it the leverage meter right um to me everything is about leverage and i talk to you about this a lot like you know, I'll do fa- I'll go always above and beyond for people. And it's not to look for the favor back. I always say, like, I'm not going to get the favor back from that person. I'll get it from somebody else down the road. But it's just always giving. I've just built the career out of giving, giving, giving without the expectance of getting re- return, getting my return on investment. I just believe in faith and like, all right, I'm going to get mine back. And just by treating people, well, we're going on a yacht in two days um, mm-hmm. because of our relationship. So I just... Treat people good, man. I think that treat, I've been on private jet three times and I've only spent like $200. So um, I think that's fully funded. Yeah, so, yeah, hello. Just have better friends, right? Yeah. Because it's well, not our jet you're getting. Yeah. <laughs> well, 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 it, it, well, you know, he talked about like how high maintenance you guys and how little maintenance I am. I disagree a little bit because like I'm trying to get there too, right? Like, yeah. That's why I hang out with, with you guys. And, you know, he's a smarter version, but I've always just wanted to hang out of a higher caliber people of me and it's just worked out in my favor. I need to figure that out. Cause that's, that's dope. Well, I tell you one thing, man, like some, like I, I see the way you were like, even in small instance, like we'd be at a restaurant and the waiter would come by and normally I'm just like, Hey, like, they're like, how are you doing today? I'm like, good. How are you? And they're like, I was like, Oh, and that stops. I'm like, Oh, I've satisfied it. They're happy. I asked them about their day. Ryan's like, what's your name? Every time. His name. And every then every time. time they come back, he always says, thank you. So-and-so thank you, John. I appreciate it, John. Thank you, John. No, no worries, John. It's okay. 
They're like, Dude, that, sometimes that, I think he's crazy. Like, literally, I'm like, all right, here we go, Ryan again. He's like being overly nice, but it's like the shift in the dynamic. And I've even started doing this before. Like, it's the craziest thing when you literally, in any setting, you walk up to a customer service counter, you walk into a business, anything. It's like we become such a transactional society that literally just like pausing and be like, how's your day going? And people, like, their energy shifts so much. People are getting beat up. Think about you. Think about you guys. You guys get beat up every day as a professional, right? And I don't care where on the ladder you are, you're getting beat up in your professional career, maybe even at home, right? So the way I look at it is, and honestly, I learned this from um, How to Win Friends and Influence People. President Roosevelt had a staff of, what, 60-something or maybe more in the White House. He knew down to the janitor to the gardener, he knew everybody's name. And so I learned it in there and then I shifted it. And I'll tell you, man, I get so much stuff free at restaurants. Like it's insane, like free dishes, free desserts, um, drinks, like you name it, Beverly could tell you. And it's just simply by, what is your name? Then I have a rule that the first three times, that's where it gets annoying. The first three times that I could say your name, I'm gonna say your name just so I could auto program it and say it at my thing. But it's like, everybody matters, right? And I think if you treat everybody like everybody matters, They'll treat you like you matter, right? I just have so, such a hard time remembering. Like, I'll do, I'll be like, what's your name? And I'll walk got, away, and I'm like... The magic rule's three times. What did they say their name was? I'll try to say it three times. I don't even get the to same. the second time. I'm like, <laughs> what was their name again? Was it John? Nathan. He looks like, he looks like a Josh. <laughs> See, now, Josh. Bev, now I got Bev locked in. So, like, now I'll tap him, like, ask, ask, ask the name when he comes back. Because sometimes I do forget, right? Mm. So, ask, ask your name when he comes back or introduce yourself. Um, but it's yeah, just it a self-discipline thing to remember to do those little things like you've now like at first it was probably hard for you oh, to yeah. remember to ask but now it's intuitive uh to be able to do that so i i think it's good i mean i haven't gotten to the uh i haven't gotten to like the asking the name every single mm-hmm. time i definitely do it sometimes but it, it's it's like we become so oblivious right and it's not intentional like sometimes nadine has looked at me and she's like you were just rude to that person i was like no i wasn't like, what do you mean I was rude? Because, like, you literally, like, think about somebody walks up to a table, and it's, like, these stupid TikTok videos that literally, like, reenact these things and make you see, like, what you're doing. If somebody walks up to a table, and they, like, look at you, and they're like, hey, how's your day going? You're just, like, looking at the menu, and they're like, can I get some a drink? You're like, uh-huh. And, like, you literally don't interact with them. And it's just, it's it does it's It does, honestly, like, one of my biggest pet peeves in going out, especially as a group, is when the waiter comes to the table, nobody pays attention. They're yeah. just so engrossed in their conversation. He's like, I'm just trying to get you food. Or like, we're like, who had the chimichanga? And I know it's you. Yeah. And I'm looking at you. And you're not you, yeah. Brian. But uh, you're talking to somebody else. And I'm like, he's standing right there. Just And I'm like, he had that. That went there. This goes here. Because it's like, they don't want to be up there holding your plate for, you're, you're not tipping them that like, much. We, like, just dismiss, we, we get to this like transactional world where we're yeah. just dismissing that there's still people. Imagine mm-hmm. if you were sitting there with plates, like, it'd be aggravating. Yeah. To treat people like humans, like you, you want to get to know them, and it's hard. Like it's sim- com- first, it comes down to like just simple awareness. Like being aware in that moment is so crucial because I think that's where we really lose out on it. And then being like, if you come to, it's like reminding yourself, like, did I do enough? Mm-hmm. But I have a thing with 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 waiter. Can you say service anymore? I feel like I forget. Waiters I, and waitresses. I don't know the right pronouns on that one. But, uh, <laughs> uh, when they come to the table, if they're just like not in a good mood, like I make it my goal that entire meal. Like I'm gonna get them to smile. I'm gonna I'm gonna be so nice to them that they can't. Their attitude's got to go oh, away. Yeah, kill them with kindness, yeah. right? And usually it does. Oh yeah. So if you if we had to wrap like what is fully funded up in one sentence, what would that one liner be for you? I think it's 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 finding a way to. It's finding a, it's one, it's understanding what, like what, what excites you in life and what you're looking to accomplish and then leveraging the world to be able to, to fulfill that. That's good because everybody's success is different, yeah. right? So what does it mean to you? Yeah. So like for me, it's like, I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to live a life that I'm proud of and I want to enjoy the world. I believe every person should experience the world. If you haven't, if you Especially, you know, we're in America, right? If you haven't left the country, you need to leave the country oh, yeah. because you need to see what the rest of the world is going through and understand that a lot of the stuff that we deal with now is so minute. When you go to a, another country, like I was in Bali, and to know that these people, their equivalent yearly salary is, t- on average, I think it was like ten to 12000 a year, right? So on average, they gross as a, as, as a person working, they don't leave the island. They don't get two weeks vacations. 
they work until they're in their 60s and then they retire and they all focus on family for a thousand bucks a month so when you go there and you're like you, you treat when you go there and you come back it gives you a different perspective so anyway it's to be proud right proud of the work that we do here like where i you know our company our mortgage company home first lending but also to enjoy the plug? world that was a, i guess it was a plug <laughs> but also to enjoy the world and then everything i do facilitates those those two main goals and obviously my my faith is also very important to me love that love that you have a foundation what about you what about you no, you first. For me, for me. Is this the bickering that Nate right, was talking about? Yeah, you know, it's like, no, nah. oh, Chico, Chico. Oh, man, for me, uh, my, my mission is to provide massive impact, right? I'm always looking at how to provide impact and then live in abundance. And I kind of tone down success, man. When you get around success a lot, um, especially a kid like me always chasing success, it is, you kind of start to dumb it down. I just want to live in Puerto Rico, man, have like a farm or something um in spanish it's, it's called a borracho i just want to be like a drunk i want to be drinking by like 10 in the morning um and just be like you know just chill not to get drunk like i just want to have a beer by the by the you beach want the early. option to get drunk yeah like you know just say hey, if i want a 10 in the morning i want to crack a beer open and, and go look at my cows on my farm and take my horse for a ride that's it and then you know having things in place to continue to provide take impact my horse to the old town <laughs> so there's no uh ride. drunk riding a horse rule oh oh there. no we're doing all of that it's my farm right like i'm the king of the jungle bro um so yeah i just want to make massive impact and live in abundance so fully loaded i look at it like a like a, a loading bar and i'm just trying to load that bar fully funded you changed the title of the first episode <laughs> well, what did i call it you, you call it fully loaded oh <laughs> it led to his analogy though. Yeah. Like, you know, come on ryan try to get fully loaded man fully loaded said, <laughs> hello right um <laughs> that's hilarious you know it's actually interesting you talk about like um just wanting to like get drunk right but what you're really saying and what i'm realizing through my evolution is like man like the hustle the grind you know it's great but it's like there's more to life and i think it's a matter of like what season in life you're in what perspective what lens you're looking in because man like for me you know i have four small children like my priorities have shifted i still want to be this lion and animal every single day but at some times like i need to be tame but that's true it's like like, what are we working hard for? So everybody wants to work hard, work hard, work hard. But at the end of the day, like, I think that the ultimate, you know, um, measure of success is like true, like time freedom that you get to get up, do what you want to do exactly. when you want to do it, who you want to do it with. Right. And, you know, for me, <clears throat> you know, kind of like the fully funded thing is I like you do believe that life is meant to be abundant. Right. And what I mean by abundant, I mean, like you should have and be able to you know, do anything and everything that you possibly could imagine. And I want to preface that and say, like, as long as you're ethical, moral, like you're doing right, you're a good person, um, you know, you should be able to live your life how you wanted to and experience everything that life has to offer from traveling to, you know, having incredible experiences that you've been able to do. But for me, it's like fulfilling each of those buckets in my life. But like also kind of like hacking it at the same time, figuring out how to enjoy those things without, you know, being irresponsible, but, you know, like also making sure that you have true balance in your life. Like, okay, like we can, we're going to talk a lot about business and stuff on this podcast. And it's like, you got to have all the success in the world, but if you don't have your health, like you really have nothing. And that's such a cliche and corny thing to say. And there's probably thousands of conversations and podcasts that talk about, oh, if you don't have your health, but it, it, it couldn't be oh, more true. Man. When you get into those mid thirties and those knees just don't operate the same, yeah. right? Like what, what's all the money in the world if I can't walk up some stairs? Exactly. Uh, so it's real. So now you got to sum it up because I had to sum it up in like a sentence. Yeah. No, my sum up is like fulfilling like the buckets in your life that matter most to you being able to live abundantly but responsibly at the same time and just having true fulfillment you know my 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 mission in life now is you know to provide opportunities and experiences to others that they never imagined for themselves i'm going on three sentences but you know yeah just just fulfilling the buckets man and like truly enjoying life without you know worry yeah, love that so mine was like the most selfish of them all right when you think about it because like i'm i am you know obviously obviously i was talking about like my experience and what I'm looking, you're talking about creating an influence for others. Obviously, I want to be proud of the company. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, you mentioned being able to provide other people with opportunities. But, you know, what's interesting is like they're different, but they're all in the same. Right? Oh, yeah. Because I want to be proud of the company we work for. The only mm -hmm. way to do that is the people that we have making an impact on them and then providing them with opportunities. And I think that we have uh, for the most part. But the fact that we can talk about 
in a group setting how to accomplish our individual goals with the same formulas. Yeah. I think that's what's crucial about about this podcast and what we're looking to uh, accomplish as we go through that is it could be different and it'd be great to li- like learn about what other people are, uh, what that definition is for them too and to show them how like, okay, maybe it's not buying your Lamborghini to rent it out and make some money. Maybe it is. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's not about travel hacking. Maybe it is. You know, is it about how you treat people every day? Like, it's, I'm really excited to like go through a lot of those different aspects to do it because it's the same formula. Yeah, we're looking for different results, but the formula is the same. Yeah. I would love for us to kind of go and introduce ourselves because, yes, a lot of people that are listening to us are part of our community, mm-hmm. but there's going to be new listeners that don't know who the heck we are from Adam, right? So I'd like to dive in with like Christian, like you're kind of like the OG of the group. Like you were born in a loan originator office. I didn't right? always look this handsome. <laughs> you uh, grew into this I specimen. Gr- I grew into this and my hair grew out of it. It looks like you got a spray tan there. Uh, I'm actually Hispanic, so I do tan pretty well. Uh, mm. But there's also a little shadow there, so I think it's all I didn't get that Hispanic. So you've never had a spray tan? No. Who? For a I actually want to try to get a spray tan. I would actually believe you. No, but... No, 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 I'm being serious. <laughs> I, um, I just, the curveball, I, told him, I was like, me too. He's like, I actually believe no, that. But, I, but back to Christian, let's um, edit that producer. No, just kidding. Um, but yeah, it's like, bro, introduce yourself. You were like born inside a loan originator office. You probably did an app at five. So that's, yeah, that's what it feels like, um, especially in mortgage years. Uh, no, so um, my... Uh, my parents got into the mortgage business. They had moved down to Florida. They were trying to figure out some businesses to work out because they were leaving, you know, that the the life that they had in New York. Uh, somehow they got into credit repair. Why do people want to repair their credit? Because they want to buy a house. It's typically, you know, why they're doing it. Uh, and then that just led them into that. They started as originators and opened up a branch, then partnered with another company, and eventually opened up what is now Home First Lending. Uh, so when I was like 14, 15, like I had no interest in like, I had no interest in the school game. Were you the kid that was like, all right, my parents are doing this thing. I want nothing to do with what my parents are doing. No, I was the opposite. I just wanted money Um, because, (laughs) no, you know, we we didn't have a lot of money for a while. Like we've had friends that filled up our fridge for us. Like there was a time like they had an Internet business and there was that that had gone away. And there was a time where we'd be waiting four hours for bread to make in a bread maker that was leftover inventory. Uh, so, so this is a good conversation because, yeah, we talked about like all of the things that we've got to be able to achieve and get yeah. to. But we come from some some, some backgrounds. Well, and obviously, if, if you've only if most people that know me don't know any of that. Right. Exactly. So I got uh, I'm sure I've been referred to as having a silver spoon or like, oh, he just works for his parents. Um, so like, I didn't have that. Like my buddies, they were all getting new jerseys and hats and shoes. And then, you know, I'd go to my friend's house cause they would have all like, they had, I think at the time it was like PS2 and like the Xbox, they had everything, you know, and I didn't have any of that stuff. And it wasn't because like I was deprived as a kid. Like we always lived in a good neighborhood and a good house and we always ate, right. It wasn't maybe like an abundance, but we always ate. So we never starved. We always, my, my dad never let us live in a bad neighborhood. And so those old things were like like foundationally important. Um, but when they had the business, I was like, all right, I went in on this. Cause like, I'm, they're still building it up. I didn't know what it was like to just have things like given to you, like be like in the abundance of it. Right. You have to work for it. Mm-hmm. Um, and so like in middle school, I sold candy and that's how like I got through summer. Like, so that your selling. first hustle was candy? my first hustle. Yeah. I got my, my dad, he invested in me. I didn't never mm-hmm. ask for his money back. He spent 12 <laughs> bucks on a case of, um, starburst. And I sold it in one day. Nice. And uh, I had competition in school. This girl was in a different class selling it for 50 cents. But uh, I was in a different, I had a different uh, demographic. So I sold it at 75 cents. All right. Uh, so I knew I can, I can sell out. Because we're different, different markets All right. within the same school. Um, <laughs> That's good. And so I did that. And I don't know, man, I was a shrimpy middle schooler. I, I could have gotten jumped. I, I probably had 100 bucks on me at any given time and just like a bunch of singles, you know. Uh, or just singles, singles, like in singles, like, uh, so I, and I was an easy target. I don't know how I never got jumped, but, uh, probably my wit got right. me out of it. Uh, in any case, so when I left and went to high school, like I didn't have that same opportunity, like, so can I went to a magnet school? It was a lot, lot less people. And, uh, a what school magnet magnet? Yeah. I went to crooms as a tech school. Um, so in the middle of that, I figured out the bus route that got me to where my parents' office was. And I was like, just give me something to do. So at the time, our mortgage files were not digital. Like, a mor- this was a mortgage file when wow. it was all said and done. And these guys were making, you know, at the time the market was crazy, it was before the crash. 
uh, they were they were making tons of money. They didn't want to stack their files for compliance purposes, so I was like, "All right, I'll do it." I think I some of the, I think I charged twenty five dollars to stack it. Uh, the first file took me four hours to put together. I don't know what I was like. What's a one zero zero three? Like that's a, it's a ten oh three for non mortgage <laughs> right. people. That's your mortgage application. I was like, "What is this? What's a T T I L?" So like. I had to figure out what these documents were like to match it to the stack. And it got to the point where like I would come after school and I'd stack 10 files and they'd have to write me a check for 250 bucks. And I felt like I was the richest person ever because oh, yeah. I was just, I was 15. Like, and so the next Xbox, like I paid for myself, like my, I remember the razor, remember the razors? Oh yeah. Like, I paid for that myself. Like razor new, scooter. No, the yeah. phone. Oh, the flip up. <laughs> the flip phone. <laughs> And it was like the coolest thing. But of course, everybody looked at me as like some parents, like rich kid, spoiled kid that, you know, his parents handed him everything. I was like, no, like, yeah, they gave me an opportunity. Like I begged for it, but they gave it to me and I took advantage of it. And yeah. it just slowly, it just slowly transpired. And like my parents made sure to humble me too, because when they realized how much money I was making on it, they put me on hourly and <laughs> kept the override. Uh, so that's a smart business people, smart yeah. business people. And then, you, but, and then I learned how to do compliance and how to do HR and processing and accounting. That's where I met Zach. Cause mm. he had opened up an office and he's so funny. He'd call me from Avalon park, be like, Hey, I just deposited this check. I'll be there in an hour, get it, get there in an hour. I'd have to check ready. He'd then go to the, so he deposited at the regions <laughs> at his, in his town side of town, go to Lake Mary Boulevard to cash a check. And it literally got to the point where I pick up the phone and I'd be like, it's Zachary Blasnick, check number so-and-so. This is the exact amount. Of like, okay, we'll cash it for him. <laughs> um, but that's how it all started and just kind of stuck with it. So I, being that I was, you know, 15, 16, I was like, I want to finish school early. So I went to like adult high school just to get, like just to finish quickly so I could work. And then the market crashed. And <clears> while everybody <throat> was hanging out at 18, I was, you know, there was a point where it's just my parents and I running the entire, the entire show. And then how, I guess the best way is to meet Zach. Like how did you guys connect? And how did you get here, Zach? Well, how much time you got? Uh, Zach, great story. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now we we can go into that story uh, uh, another time, but basically, I mean, our connection was I was looking for a way to survive. You know, uh, in 2000, I got in mortgage business uh, March 15th of 2007. By October of 2009, I was filing bankruptcy here in the uh, Orange County uh, District Court. I don't even know if that's what it is, but anyways. And uh, at that time, I was just looking for a way to survive. Actually, I had joined them in April of 2008. Really, a necessity of survival because in our business, everything was imploding and crashing, and I needed to find a way. I was like, hey, you know, I'm still closing one or two deals a month, but I need to be able to make like 100% commission right now. And I was like, I think I could figure this out and do it on my own. So they had an opportunity where I could open up a branch and kind of do my own thing, and they just supported me from like a compliance payroll, you know, um, you know, a couple other things and. That's kind of how we met, but uh, born and raised in Jersey, man, you know, lived there for the first 18 years of my life. My father had an opportunity to relocate with his job down here to Orlando, finished my first year of college, and then uh, they they shipped me off uh, down here. He said, if you want me paying for your school, you need to be uh, here with the family. So came down. Um, funny, as I'm listening to you, we have a lot of similarities like uh, with, with my parents and wanting nice things. I remember... There were so many things I wanted from like rollerblades and my dad's like, all right, well, how much are those rollerblades? And it's like $300. And he's like, all right, you figure out how to make 150 and uh, I'll match you the other 150. So I think that hustle mentality has projected a lot of us forward and it has allowed us to be, you know, persevere during this time. But yeah, man, you know, was in sales my entire life. You know, people say, well, how long you been? What, what do you mean your entire life? I'm like, well, really, when I was five years old, my dad owned a comedian store and he put me behind the cash register. And this was in Jersey, and he was like, okay, when somebody walks up and they want to ask for uh, a coffee and a buttered roll, you upsell them. That was the con I first learned the concept of upselling, always asking for business, yeah. right? I was like, okay, do you want a pack of cigarettes with that too? Like, he's like, <laughs> five he was, years old. Yeah, we got cigarettes. Like, we got to get a margin on cigarettes. Ask them if they want a newspaper, they want cigarettes, whatever it is. So, like, I was asking people at five years old, like, okay, I'm going to get you coffee and buttered roll, but you need that too. So that was like always ingrained in me. And I had every single job that you can imagine under the sun at the mall where I was slinging uh, kids CDs with their names in them during the holidays, some cell phones, freaking uh, winter gloves. You, you, Cinnabon. It, mm -hmm. Cinnabon. Cinnabon. Oh yeah. yeah. Cinnabon and uh, a mocha lot of chill, which is a cool uh, mocha indulgence. I love so, how excited wow. you get every yeah, time you yeah. say that. But yeah, man. Sales all my life came down to Florida. 
um, you know, got in the mortgage business pretty early on. It's been a ride, man. It's been quite a ride since then. I've learned so much and I'm excited to kind of uh, encompass some of that background. Not only the uh, the highs, but the lows on our fully funded <laughs> podcast. Not fully loaded. So, All Ryan, right. what's your story, bro? Oh, man, my story. I'm a New York <laughs> transplant as well. Um, I actually moved out. We moved to Florida overnight. My mom was like, um, hey, we're going to your grandmother's house for the weekend. Pack a bag. You know, imagine being like a five, six year old kid packing a bag. All I packed was probably toys and, and my Batman on the wear or something. And um, yeah, right. We literally you know, Batman has been my guy. Um, As it should be. Yeah. <laughs> we um, we went to the to my grandmother's house thinking we we're going for the weekend. And when we get to my grandmother's house, she was loading up a, a moving truck and we moved to Florida. So it was like in, so I literally want to write a book one day, a backpack in a dream. I came to Florida with just a backpack of things. I come from an era people are, you know, people got it good now. They got um, food stamps on credit cards, right? I, I come from the era where it looked like enlarged <laughs> monopoly money. It was like purple and orange. and you had So to people know you're broke because you oh, got to hand it over oh, to yeah, the you, cashier. Yeah, you'd have to be at the cashier and like rip these things out and hand each one. So I come from that era. So that also inspired my hunger. Like that's always been my I drive of just like I've seen dead broke right I've seen food stamps I've lived in section eight up to middle school um so my drive and my hustle comes from that like seeing and feeling nothing like right, I already felt this feeling and I, I know what this feels like so what is it going to cost me or hurt me to go strive for more and that's also I think my kryptonite at times because I'm, I'm fine with uh, peanut butter and jelly sandwich or ham and cheese sandwich. Like I know how to survive, right? Peanut butter jelly solid though. Oh yeah, like I think that like it's funny. Mm. Like I'm, I'm like with chunky peanut butter. <laughs> yeah, you know how much things like I wouldn't eat for years. We need a whole I, episode I, about food, man. Oh, we We're need to go, go to some tangent. restaurants. <laughs> um, but there's things that I, I wouldn't eat for years because like I was like peanut butter and jelly being one of them ramen, <clears> and now I'm getting back to them. Like oh, this is a good nostalgic snack. So that's my story. And then I met Zach about 12, 11, 12 years ago in a room full of Asian kids and. We connected on New York and New Jersey, and it's been three years here, and I feel like in my professional mortgage career, I've been in three different economies. So COVID lockdown, low interest rates, high interest rates, only cash offers, but I'm excited. Um, I think we share a big faith component. Um, you know, I, I just believe in the faith, right? Um, and, and then on you guys, you guys have been here before and been through different downturns. So I look at it as if I'm waking up every day and playing in the same sandbox as you two, um, we'll be all right, right? Uh, we'll figure it out. All right, so we facts. need a fun fact from each of you guys and then we can get out of here. I opened up for um, Little Wayne, Young Jock, Young Jeezy. Fun fact. <laughs> Young Jeezy. Can we get a, is there a video of this that somewhere? I have some pictures. I have pictures. No, no, no. And maybe a video. <laughs> video. Uh, I don't know if we want to bring that up. Did you open up like rapping? Yeah, I was a rapper in my past career. Um, I have some viral rap videos out there on the inner can we space. Get a little, can we get a little verse? Drop the beat. No, just kidding. <laughs> uh, fun fact, Christian. Um, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a nerd at heart. And you're a movie buff. This guy oh, is a, yes. he's a walking <laughs> TV show. Yeah, he's a walking TV show. <laughs> Anything we uh, do line. is a TV yeah, show. Every, like, do you remember? Um, this actually reminds me of that one scene no, in I don't the office. Remember. I'm like, bro, I don't watch that stuff. No, no. So, what is your what is, is the office or is the office your goat? Like, I um, well, I, okay, so I don't actually believe in having a favorite movie or TV show. I think everything is. Oh, my God. Here, we would go. Say this. here we go. Right. But it's like, okay, so sometimes like you have movies that like make you feel get in your feels and like you're not going to watch all the time or you want just like a good action film or like Gabby and I have talked about this. Like sometimes you just want a mindless action film like the Fast and the Furious. Like agree, you don't agree. care. Like, what about speed? He ca he's catching a car with his bare hands. Like that makes no sense whatsoever. They're driving like, in space. I didn't go to the movie for an Oscar worthy scientific, you know, thing. I went for mindless action. Um, but like TV shows, it just depends on my mood. So like, you have friends is very nostalgic. Office is always like a classic. Can you come with like a, a quote off the top of your head? I mean, like a friend's quote, like a, I feel like you have like these in your Rolodex. Like in my Rolodex? Yeah. Like Mike, Michael does have a Rolodex in the office, but he uh, uses like weird, obscure, like, like facts to like remember people. So he gets back at Dwight that way. So there's your, there's your reference. There you go. That. See, there was, yeah. look, I, I knew there was one there. But uh, I'll give you one that it's my favorite quote. And it's, uh, it's Chandler from Friends when he's like, <laughs> he goes, hi, I'm Chandler. I make jokes when I'm uncomfortable. 
I, I relate to that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No wonder. So that's so now that's that makes sense. Why yeah. you always say these little corny yeah. jokes? No. <laughs> You're always <CD>. uncomfortable. <laughs> no, I'm always uncomfortable. Or he's like, uh, I'm not good with the advice, but can I interest you in a sarcastic comment? I, I like that one. Maybe so. I'll watch Friends one of these days. So, uh, you know, I, I love talking business and everything, but I actually am a girl dad. I have four girls only. No boys. No, I'm not having another child. No, I'm not getting my boy. I have four girls right now. So pretty wild life. So I have a question for you. Yeah. At what point was it the fourth girl where you're like it's not happening and I'm 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 done trying for a boy? Did you figure that after the third? Was it the second? Like at what point were you like the boy's not happening? Uh, just watch all the videos of the gender reveals. You'll figure <laughs> out how I feel about all that. I saw I saw the best meme ever, and I think I sent it to you. And it said, uh, it said, be wary about a man that only produces girls. God does not want that man to replicate himself on this earth. Oh. Yes, be fearful. <laughs> Man. And other bonus fun fact, I used to uh, scratch a DJ when I was there a little kid, and uh, my DJ name, before I went to like a real legit DJ name, which was DJ Heist, I was DJ Spins. Oh, man. On the ones and two. <laughs> All right, so next episode, you're going to Zach's going to spin, you're going to DJ, and I'm just going to enjoy Yo, let's get some yeah. techniques in here, man. You rap, I'll spin, I'll do some break beats, you know, some... And I'll make I'll make off. That was really bad. I was trying to scratch and... Well, welcome to Fully Loaded. No, just kidding. Fully Funded. Fully Funded. <laughs> all right, guys. Well, tune back in for our next episode of Fully Funded where you get to hear all this amazingness. And we're going to have some really special guests. And uh, I'm excited for this ride. It's also important to know what Fully Funded means to you. So put that in there. Let yeah, us know. Drop and those in the comments. We happy to, we'd love to talk about it. And it's going to be more than just us, guys. We're going to have <laughs> guests. We're going to have other loan officers, other people in the community. So tune in. It's going to be awesome. All right. Let's do it. Peace. Sweet.